All right, welcome, Pastor John here, um, welcoming you here to our series uh, going through the Bible, and uh, we're continuing today with the book of Job in the Old Testament. Now, we just finished last time we had the book of Esther, that's the completion of the so-called historical books, and now we're entering the so-called wisdom books. I'll say a little bit more of that after. So please open your Bibles and turn to Job, that's the book of Job, chapter 13, verses 13 to 16. So that's Job, chapter 13, verses 13 to 16. Here we read, Be silent now, and leave me alone. Let me speak, and I will face the consequences. Why should I put myself in mortal danger? and take my life in my own hands. God might kill me, but I have no other hope. I'm going to argue my case with him. But this is what will save me. I am not godless. If I were, I could not stand before him. God bless the universe of this word. Placing our hope in God. Placing our hope in God. So the background here, we have... Um, just a little bit of the context and background is the events of Job um, take place in the period of the patriarchs in the Old Testament. The patriarchs were Abraham, Isaac, um, Jacob, and Joseph. So um, uh, some think that Job might be the oldest um, oldest uh, recorded book, even older than Genesis, but we're not sure. Um, the um, um, but we do know that the events do take place in the period of the patriarchs. So who is Job talking here to, right? So what's happening is um, Job, who is a righteous man before God, um, as God himself confirms in Job chapter 1, is being wrongly accused by his friends. And basically they're saying, um, they're saying something like, um, uh, you must have sinned and therefore God is punishing you. So um, if you read the book of Job, which is a bit longer, um, he has to suffer a whole lot of hardships, uh, loss of family, um, he's grieving, um, his health um, fails. And we realize that it is uh, Satan, the devil, is behind it. And all that is um, expressed in Job chapter 1. So um, I encourage you to read the entire book of Job and um, so understand what's going on there. So it's basically spiritual warfare. And his friends are really, well, not much friends of, <clears throat> you know, um, uh, kind of friend-like. So Job is being wrongly accused by his friends. And that's his reply to his friends. But he stands his ground. So um, we're talking about wisdom literature. So where is wisdom found? Where is wisdom found? Right? It's um, it's uh, in Job twenty eight twelve and verse twenty, uh, we can understand that wisdom is found in God alone. So Job decides to turn to God uh, at this moment in time to plead his case. So we read in uh, Job chapter twenty eight verses twelve and twenty. But do people know where to find wisdom? Where can they find understanding? But do people know where to find wisdom? Where can they find understanding? God bless you his word. So the topic here is, why do the righteous suffer? Why do the righteous suffer? Is Job righteous? Yes. The Bible tells us this in Job, um, verses, Job chapter 1, verses 8 and onward. So Job 1 to 8. It's Satan, the devil, who challenges God. It is just so astonishing. It's something you want to, don't want to miss and I encourage you to read it again, as I said, the entire book of Job. And here we read in Job 1, verse 8. Then the Lord asked Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. God bless the universe word. 
So God himself confirms that um, Job is righteous, uh, even blameless, but the, but the um, uh, Satan is not challenging Job, but he's actually challenging God. So uh, here's an interesting parallel uh, from, if you look at verse 15, which we just read, uh, this is what I might save me, I'm not godless. Um, so in God, uh, when it says, God might kill me, but I have no other hope. I'm going to argue my case with him. There's a parallel here in verse 15 uh, for, of our Lord Jesus Christ, reaching out to God the Father. So in Matthew 26, 36 to 39, we read, Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet your will be done, not mine. God bless the reading of his word. The interesting thing in Gethsemane is that even though God, uh, he, he hears Jesus' cry, um, he, uh, he remains silent. Yes, he does send uh, angels to tend to Jesus, but he doesn't answer. So this silence that Gethsemane is a very important part to understand our Lord's suffering on our behalf so when God really was silent, right here, um, uh, for whatever reason, right, we, uh, Jesus bridges that gap that we as believers do not have to face that silence on our, on our own. Because Jesus went through this just before um, he was nailed to the cross and, and executed, died for, uh, for us. So basically, like, like Jesus, um, in that sense, Job stands for... Uh, as we see verse 16, every God-fearing person and all God-fearing people. So, like Job, as believer, when suffering, what do you do? What does it mean for you to place your hope in God? It means, as believer, we are placing our hope in God and God only. We understand who God is and acknowledge his sovereignty. Job does this later in Job uh, 42, verse 2. Um, we read, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. God bless you in his word. This is Job's um, prayer and confession and repentance before God. So God wants us to come to him, no matter what it is we're dealing with. Even if we are, um, you know, righteous, God-fearing people. Um, Jesus Christ himself uh, gives us this promise. We have Christ as our high priest, and we have this in the Bible as Paul writes in Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, Yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. God bless the reading of his word. So that's our call to come to our Lord Jesus, placing our hope in God, in our Lord Jesus Christ, as God himself, as God in the flesh. And uh, we do well to follow the advice here, um, as Job also eventually uh, does later um, in, in the book of Job. May God bless you and keep you.